Hi, Chris. Rob, you sound perky you did about five minutes ago. <laughs> How, How are, are you? you? How are you? Good, good, good. It's another week. Yeah. It's another week of the dose. Just let you know, Rob, my lighting is worse than ever. My sound, my sound will probably be okay. Let me just double check. Let me do that. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah, sounds okay. Um, sound will probably be okay. Oh, shit, I'll just get my camera. Um, lighting might be atrocious. I don't know. I don't know. Also, there's a sleepover happening in the house. Uh-oh. I know, uh-oh. So there could be, there'll be many, and my son just came in two months ago to tell me his friend was pooing, and he felt like he was very <laughs> flappy. So I don't know what, <laughs> anything. I should be, you know, I should okay. be. I need to be doing this for the BBC, don't I? I? How many hits would that get if I was in the BBC and the kid came in and tell oh, his yes. friend was pooing? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <sighs> How many stories have you, Rob? Two. I have two. How many do you have? <laughs> Three. Good for you. Do you want to start first this week, Chris? Rob, let me start first this week. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm ready and rolling. Okay. So my first story is like the art newspaper, Rob. Do you, do you, do you, do you look into the art? You probably do, the art newspaper. Is that Tom Seymour? Tom Seymour. Well, it's not just Tom Seymour. It's a whole rake of people, but Tom writes for them. Um, and uh, as anybody knows, I don't want to use the word groupie. That makes me seem like a sycophant, okay? But I do enjoy a bit of Tom, okay? If I'm, I, don't, if I, I don't have Tom twice in the week. I feel slightly left out, okay? Mm -hmm. So Tom, Tom writes for the art newspaper, um, and of course, Tom is, uh, for me, photographically led and, you know, I kind of, I value his, I, you know what, I don't want to go wrong as I say this every, every two weeks. So I value his opinion highly. Okay. He's a bright guy, much brighter mm -hmm. than me. So whenever people aren't bright, what do they do? We look at bright things, don't we? In a kind of magpies type way. So, and also I'm bitter, you know what I mean? I need to be, I need a, a certain measure in my mind. And I look to certain people to give me that measure, okay? And Tom is one of those people that I look so I don't go over the top and start squealing, okay? So anyway, Tom has, the whole way through, the whole Magnum and uh, Martin saga, um, mm -hmm. there's, been a, there's been a few people who have written with it, written about it in a really measured, sensible but also they have been they've been able to criticize i think because they've been measured okay um and they're not having a dig you know and i, I know that and this probably you know if i could go back you know to the beginning of um the podcasts i probably wouldn't have been taking the piss out of martin had i known that he was going to fuck up so royally you know what i mean so, yeah, kind of. Yeah, well, so it meant whenever I said something that it wasn't. Maybe not as hard. No, I meant I'm not, having a, I'm, not having a, I'm not having a dig, you know what I'm saying? So what's happened is I've kind of withdrawn from a lot and I've read loads and I've talked about stuff and I've said stuff that I kind of regret probably in the last few weeks because they were kind of, it was smug at times and 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 and, and probably silly, silly and boyish. But anyway, I'm, I'm now at a point where I said I wasn't going to talk about it last week. I'm going to put it to bed this week because... The art newspaper of um, uh, Tom and Lewis, Lewis Bush um, have uh, did a they've done a podcast which is it's called Cancelled. Should good artists pay for good behavior for bad? Should good artists pay for bad behavior? Now we know at the time whenever Martin um, was a silly Billy at the first time, to say the least, that there was you know mm -hmm. these voices of reason that were like actually you know disregarding what not disregarding but taking into account what happened. You know, should we talk about um, ethics? Should we? Is this not a really good opportunity in photography to talk about stuff about this rather than just lambasting the one guy or w w one uh, one one group of guys or, and and use it as a conversation starter to do something important? Okay, um, mm -hmm. you know, like Bristol getting rid of Martin was it not a better? option to keep them and have a conversation about it but anyway this the um <clears throat> this this podcast um and there'll be a link below okay um you know it it's it's really interesting because it goes into about you know 
um, do we in, how, how do you in, engage in honor? Okay, so so somebody like somebody somebody messes up. Okay, can we still engage with the work but not honor them? You know, can we look at the work but not hold them on a pedestal? Okay, and I find this really ethically really interesting because it's something that kind of didn't 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 I I wasn't I was just like flat out their dicks. You know what I mean? Like probably lots of people. But then when we start actually thinking about it in a in a in a smart sense, it's a time for a conversation. How do we do this? Is work is the past work of these people crap because they have been assholes? You know what I mean? Or can we rise above stuff and look at it from a sensible point of view? Okay, so that's what the conversation's about. So what we have here is, you know, you know, with regard to the magnum, you know, institutionalized failure, systematic issues, institutional changes, identity politics, all that stuff that we as photographers, you know, probably don't talk about enough. You know, we're wrapped up in all the stuff we do. And then whenever something like this, and this is big, this is big for the, for the, for photography as a whole, especially documentary photography. You know, how do we engage with that? Do we start talking about it? Do we start thinking about it? Or do we not bother? Or do we just, you know, bypass the whole thing? Um, so Tom and Lewis uh, talk about uh, about Martin. You know, pre- the earlier podcast is about about Magnum and all 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 the stuff that goes along with that. You know, it, mm. how they've been set up and how they how they function, how they did function, how you know you or I, you know, Magnum is always, you know, wouldn't you love to be? Able, a magnum photographer it's kind of where you set out to be in, in many senses um and that was part of the the failure of magnum you know with all the stuff we our dear pal um david and the and the and the, the prostitution photographs um so it starts with that and then it goes in and there was something really interesting which is martin's stuff so we know that you know baptiste called martin out on a on a book that she was given as a present and doggedly pursued it and was Put down by the Martin Park, which people at the Martin, but not by Martin, probably, well, maybe not, but by people at the Martin Park Foundation, she was treated pretty badly. Um, so what we have there is, you know, we, we need we need to start looking at at Martin a wee bit closer, maybe, and you know, and things that he's done and said. And you know, Tom comes up with, and I'm this is a really bad pronunciation. This is written phonetically, Jacques Awalabam Awa Awa. That's as, pretty good. As well, about yeah, yeah, it's probably completely wrong, you know. And his um, his work that he did around the the prostitutes go waiting game. So you know, he's photographing, I think, in Spain, Spanish prostitutes, and he's wearing a high vis jacket, and he's taking photographs of these these prostitutes. And of course, the guys in the cars are are identifiable. But of course, dear old Martin writes a forward for it, you know, or an, edit, uh, an editorial piece for it, where he um, yeah. He said it's great. You know how good is? He didn't say it was great. I won't, I'm not going to put words in his mouth. But essentially, what he said was, isn't it? You know, a really good way of working. The trick this, you know, trick the trick the guys into doing this. No, that, <laughs> that's not a good way of working. That's an awful way of working. Mm-hmm. Okay. So what we have is, you know, we have the, all the, all this stuff where you know Lewis is talking about the stuff, and Lewis is an educated an educated guy who teaches in, um, I think it's London School of Communication, I think. I should have paid attention whenever he said that. But anyway, what we have is um, this, and, um, you know, he says, you know, who are we to be saying this? You know, was, uh, he says about white middle-class males. I'm not middle-class, but I'm white for sure, and I'm a male for sure. You know, who are we to be talking about this? But I, I think that we all have to take into account stuff that um, s- stuff that's wrong. So for me, this podcast kind of puts loads of stuff um into in the context you know i mean it talks mm-hmm. about you know contextual work of an author you know problematic photography being the most useful that's what lewis said you know you don't learn anything whenever photography goes well especially in documentary photography it's this problematic stuff that enables you to teach people because you know if things don't you go learn. wrong yeah. yeah because you learn because you're like you learn from other people's mistakes or you learn from your own mistake now what magnum right. hasn't done is learned by their own mistake over the last countless weeks, and what Martin certainly hasn't done has learnt by his own mistake. You know, I'm not saying he won't do that. He won't come out and say some statement that will, you know, will, will redeem him. But here, you know, an untouchable guy, an untouchable, um, an untouchable group of people um, who have been brought 
uh, brought the you know brought the bear is that the right word? Probably not. Brought the bear. Yeah. Well, they've been they've been they've been you know they've been people are now starting to see that they're not untouchable. You can question, which for me is not an, an absolute positive. So go and listen to it. It's fifty. You should be able to question anybody. You should. Jeez, if you can question the president or the prime minister. Yeah, I know. But you know, you know. well, neither of those, neither of those bollocks. Who's above listened. the law? Who's well, above, who's you think, above you know, morality? But think of this. Think of this. You know that 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 same principle for Trump and for um, for what do you call them? The bollocks of the Bush hair for Boris and for Martin. You know, it's not a million miles away from all fucking just ignoring people. And trumping on through, hope things disappear. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. And history will be seen as something. Blinders on. Yeah, Jesus. Doing, doing, doing things for themselves. Doing things. For, you know, it's Just about. For and of course, you know, Magnum. You know, one of the founder members of Magnum was all about self promotion. You know, it was all about self promotion. So you can see where it comes from. You can see where it all stems from. But what we have here is fifty three minutes thirty six seconds that you must listen to. Okay, if you want to cool. understand, uh, just just for ethics, if not. So that was a very big blurb and a very a lot. But I've been re- I've been listening to it a few times today, and it's important, and it sums up everything that we've been I've been saying for the past uh, past seven or eight weeks um, about the whole thing, but in a much uh, more considered, intelligent way. There you go. Yeah. So that's me, Rob. Tell me, Rob. <sighs> you've got a <sighs> you've got a story about. <laughs> Take a breath now, Chris. Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm not even drinking, Rob. I'm drinking water. I'm off. I'm dry. Dry September. Good for you. you Good think? for you. You think? Good for you. You think? You. Mm. Tell me your story. I got a quick story. Cannon. Oh. In Australia. Have you heard about this? No. So Canon and Australia have shut down their online store. No. Forcing anybody that wants to buy a camera has to go to a retailer to buy it. Why? They're giving back to the retailers. They're making sure that the retailers exist when all this pandemic is over. Oh, really? How great is that? A kind move. Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be some sort of pandemic... Um story where they didn't want to be involved with people giving stuff back because they didn't want to be that's a good move no 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 they're gonna i think they're gonna they're gonna fill whatever orders they have to fill up to a point and then they're just forwarding everybody else to the retailers that is how great is that well like that's in melbourne sydney and all that nonsense so if you want what happens you live in uh, alice springs well then you get you know whatever photo retailer that's close to you to ship to you Oh, okay. Oh, I see no what you're right? Okay, just, yeah, I get what you're saying. I know there's me thinking shipping didn't exist. I mean, like, I don't know how much or what they would ever get from buying direct from Canon. Yeah, okay. Because yeah. obviously Canon can't undercut what the retailers are selling no. for. Yeah, yeah, of course. So I don't know what the benefit is to have buy direct from Have you ever Canon, bought from but... Canon? Directly? Yeah. Yeah, no. yeah God. I'd be, I'd be interested. I don't, I, I don't think. I don't think in North America you can buy direct. But that, that's or, a, you know what? I think you can. I think Sony sells their stuff online. Okay. I don't know about Canon, but I have seen Sony stuff being sold online on their website. But I mean, who's gonna who's gonna pay full retail price for it? You know, when you can buy it from B and H, especially in North America, when you can buy it from B and H or another discounted yeah, 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 yeah. big box store or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, a nice move. Somebody, somebody in the boardrooms had a that's kind great. thought. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, and it's just just Australia, nowhere else. Well, that's that's it for now, so far. Hmm. That's interesting, isn't it? People are good, Rob. People are good. Sometimes, sometimes, yeah. Positivity, Rob. Do I know something? I'm not I, have a, I have a big, huge ginger cat about to barf up a fur ball underneath my desk. No, you don't. Oh, I, Rodney. Is Rodney? Is that was, I did hear Rodney going for one there. There he is. I'm so easily... Dude. Don't, Rob, I'm so easily turned this weather. Well, it could be worse. It could be an oil. <laughs> Are you done under there, buddy? Thank you. Go back to sleep. 
What's your uh, What's your next story, Chris? Next story, Rob, is a nice wee story, and I well, not a wee story. I don't want to be. I don't want to be. I'm not being patronising. Cafe Royale books. You've heard of Cafe Royale, no doubt. Um, yeah, we've covered them before in the past. We have, Rob. We have. Well, what I'm going to say is um, Cafe Royale. Then let me just get this right. Let me get this perfectly correct, because. If I can look this up, you think I'd be prepared, wouldn't you? But no, I'm not prepared at all. I'm not prepared. Oh, Café Royale books. Okay. So, Café Royale books. Dear all, three new reprints. Okay. Lionel okay. Dermias. Dermias. Oh, my pronunciation is almost. Or. Oriandus. Oriandus. Oriandus would be uh, the word I would use. But it's just D E R I M A I S. You say that then, Mr. Smarty Dermas. Ball. Dermas. Eh? Dermas. D E R I M A M A I S. Dermas. Dermas. <laughs> Jesus, God love Lionel. Lionel, if you're watching, get in touch. Feel free to chastise. Yeah, Google will pronounce it for I you next know. time. We're from I know in Belfast. But anyway, so that's one. You've got three other. Yeah, got hold two on. Others. London, London, 1982 series. Okay. Mm -hmm. London, 1982, two, and London. I'm going to let you guess this. 1983, 1982, three. What do you think of that? Wow. Reprint original. Yeah, Jesus. Ar um, archived currently out of print titles can be seen. Okay, so it gives you this here. But it's a special offer. All three books for 12 quid. Now you tell me, Rob, wow. in the world. They, have you looked at the photographs? Do you yeah, have the books? Yeah, they're stunning. Uh, this, you, could, you could go into Café Royale books, into the, whatever library they have, okay? And you could put glue on one finger, okay? And you could throw yourself into the archive and I guarantee whatever book sticks to that finger is worthwhile. Sure. No, actually, it's not true Ooh. because there's some, some people that are shite. A couple of people anyway I can think of. It. But anyway, unless they have the <laughs> shite one. <laughs> I'm such a dick. That's just me. That's, that's Anyways. Actually, and actually, actually, I'm going to say this out loud. Their work isn't shite. They're shite. Their work's, their work's good because I've listened to what people have been talking about today. God, I'm such a wab. Um, so anyway... But as we know, Coffee, Coffee Royale books um, run by uh, Craig Atkinson, at, at, at Kinson. Go and look at it. Link below. I've talked about it before. 12 quid, three books. Where would you get it? Where would you get it, Rob? Great. S superb. Cool. Superb. British Isles work. And, and also Ireland, of course. I say British Isles. Oh, I shouldn't have said British Isles. Well, he says British Isles, but it's also Ireland. And Ireland, yeah. And Ireland. Tuck them out on the end. Okay. Should I mention so my, that's it, yeah? Should I mention my Irish passport? Never say that, no. Shouldn't bring it into it, no. I don't know. Should well, you? Well, should. Do you know also, do you know also whenever you're trying to give back your, your British citizenship, you have to pay for it? Do you know that? When you have to get back your British citizenship. No, no, no. Citizenship. To give up your British citizenship, you have to pay to give up being a British citizen, they make you pay, I think it's a couple of hundred quid. Really? Yep. Wow. So if you Tax on that. That's if you wanna, amazing. If you want to stop being a British citizen in Ireland, you have to pay. Go figure. All Boy, they get it. you coming and going, don't they? They really get you coming and going, Rob. Now, unlike the Church of Chris and Rob, if you want to leave, just leave. But you'll have don't to, leave. You'll have to get out. You'll have to get out Hit of the, the subscribe you'll button. You'll have to get out of the shackles. Up. The shackles of photography to do it. Well, what's your next story? Keeping this ball rolling. My next story is a happy story. Shut up. Don't, yeah. don't start it's that. It's another nonsense. happy story. Go. So I got two happy stories. What makes you happier in photography more than shooting instant film? Oh, uh, no, the answer to that, Rob, is nothing. 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 Digital doesn't come close. No. Instant film. So as you know, uh, oh my gosh, I can't even keep track of the scorecard on this one. Impossible project. Yes. They were, they were doing eight by 10 stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, after Polaroid ceased to exist, yeah. 
They were doing 8x10, and I believe they were doing the integral films. Yeah. So that's the yeah, 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 yeah. films yeah. with the chemical pods. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the new 55 came out, and they were doing peel apart 4x5 yeah. yeah. type 55 yeah. style. Yeah. Then they went away. Another company has picked up, and they're doing that. Yeah, you know, and gosh, I can't remember who that is. They've been doing it for about two or three years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, all this is conglomerating. Now there's a company, and Lomography is going to be carrying it. No. It is a instant back for your 4x5. No. That uses the Fuji Integral Instax film. Jeez. So the Fuji film that goes... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you'll have a, a four AA batteries in this back. Mm -hmm. It's a graph lock back, so it fits into the graph lock holders. If you have a, a four by five and you take off the ground glass, you'll have these two little sliding couplers. No, and they and they will fit around this back. So you do all your focusing and everything, mm -hmm. and then you slide off your ground glass and you put in the graph lock back. And you slide the, the sliders back in, you lock it down, you take your picture, and out, you know, this little motorized <sighs> hole comes comes your film. No. Yep. And it is how much? So it's it's cheap. It's $134 right now. Mm -hmm. They are not going to be shipping until April of 2021. Well, is it a startup thing? No. Uh, I don't know if it's a startup, but they're they're doing a pre-sale thing. I'd be buying one. So through 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 Lomography, I don't mm -hmm. think it's on Kickstarter, but I think it's through Lomography. Mm -hmm. So that, but the but the kicker is, is so you've got a four by five, right? Yeah. You know, yeah so yeah. it's that size. Yeah. This film is four inches by two and a half, so it's basically half the size of a four by five. There. But you but you get to use your four by five, you get to use all the movements, mm -hmm. your tilt and your shift and everything. Mm -hmm. And you get to use your great glass, but it's gonna be half the size of a four by five print. And not a pillow, eh? No. No, it's integral, so it's got the chemical pot on the bottom. Okay. The chemical gets swept across the film. Mm. It's inside a, a plastic sheath that just processes in daylight. You see, watch it process. If you'd have told me that was a pillow way, I might be more slightly more excited because then we'd have had a negative. Yeah, well there yeah. like I can I can put links I'll put links down below for the, the pack film peel away stuff yeah. as well. There's another company that's doing that as well now. What are they called? Spectrum or something? Yeah. Called Spectrum? Sequence sequence, I think, maybe. Well you but, think you think of that Rob if you go out, you know how much it is to you know if you're shooting a four by five. How much or five before, as I say, how much that you know you're in the, you're you're in an expense. You know, 100, oh yeah, a hundred and well, the pack film, the the pack film right now, Chris. That yeah. pack film, that new startup that's redoing pack film. Yeah, that pack film is fifteen bucks a pop. Okay, fifteen fifteen pounds, dollars, euros, whatever. Mm -hmm. A sheet, a, a single sheet? image. No, yeah, a pop. Mm. You can do the impossible project yeah. eight by ten yeah, film yeah, yeah. for fifteen. Fifteen a yeah, pop. Of course. So I mean if you had an eight by ten and you wanted to lug it around and you wanted to shoot instant, you know, it's a good deal. You know what? Yeah, but the thing is, I think yeah, I think you're right. I think the mixture of those two things, you know, because there's projects I'm I've kind of got coming up that, that would really sit. Yeah, uh, and you know, the thing is, is Chris is all this film. This is the other thing. Like all this is, is is hipster film. No, I know, it's I know. Nothing. It's nothing like we had in the seventies, eighties, and nineties. It's not. nothing like that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is all stuff that there's no color consistency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's no consistency. More than likely, there's no consistency from from box to no, box, I know. little no, I know. batch yeah, to yeah. batch. Yeah, 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 yeah. And. Uh, and it's, you know, most of this stuff is 640 ISO. Oh, is it? You know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's like ridiculous, you know. Yeah. It's, so, you know, if you're thinking about, you know, shooting chrome and you wanted to shoot a Polaroid to yeah. check yeah. your exposure to match it to your chrome, yeah. 
you're not even going to come close because no. you're shooting at 640 ISO, which probably isn't even 640. It's probably 800 or 400 or something else. I can hear Helmut Newton. I can hear him saying something in my ear. Rolling. I can hear, Spinning in his grave. I can hear him saying something. But you know we're all, you know what? You know, you know what Helmut Newton's doing? What? He's, he's in his Land Rover for laying on the horn right now. <laughs> But you know what? Range Rover. I know. But the consistency on Sunset Boulevard. The consistency. The consistency thing is madly important, of course. Whenever you're coming up, but there are th there are things there are. And I know whenever you say hipster, I'm automatically turned off, and I want to punch somebody with a moustache in the bollocks. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm. You know, and I know it's a fad and it's faddish and everything else. But there are there are the the side of that is that there are things in there that I think, you know, I could. I could definitely use maybe you know you could do that you could do that maybe for you know you could maybe spend a couple of hundred quid and and have something that's interesting for a sketch but you know for me for, for a project yeah, yeah for, for an art project, project for yeah. sure but you're not you're sure. sure well do you know what Rob you could you know there's strange things happen that you know B A or Lufthansa or something you know you might see a you might see an ad campaign at some point. You know, somebody in the boardroom's cousin who's has a moustache and just oh, been kicking the ball. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but you but you wouldn't be shooting two frames or three no. frames well, you you'd be shooting you'd be shooting you know 30 or 40 yeah, sheets of this stuff yeah, just yeah. to get something that's consistent 100 yeah, percent. You, you're gonna need sponsor, sponsorship well, you know what? i did a really nice yeah. i did a the nicest job i've ever done i ever did um on tv and film i was working for the art department in a thing called dublin murders and i had to go down and shoot polaroid um for the the, the kind of the fight not the, well, it wasn't it was the final scene in the film or the the drama mm -hmm. but i had to go down and shoot I don't know how many. It was a beautiful amount. I think it was sponsored by Polaroid. So I did down and shoot these Polaroids of these actors and actresses. And it was kind of the, the, the telltale giveaway scene about who had done this murder. And I have to say, it was the nicest job. Six o'clock in the morning, middle of, middle of Ireland, um, with a, a, in a small cottage with a range on. And the range was there, to, you know, so we could the, the director could see that you know the Polaroids, you know, bef before you know putting them under your armpit wasn't going to work. This was to heat speed things up a bit. It was a beautiful process. Jeez, beautiful. Yeah, that's, Not well, who, it's kind of dangerous. It's da <laughs> well, it was dangerous, and you know what? The consistency well, well, holding it over a flame. I mean, you're not going to get a good no, no, consistent no, no, process no, out no, of that. No, no, no. The range, the, the, it was a range. Just the, you know, the range was on low, so it was just the temperature on this on the top of the range. We just set, you know, mm. I don't know forty Polaroid. It was just nice. It was nice. Consistency wasn't a problem. We didn't need consistency. What we needed was a sense of drama. <laughs> hey, Chris, how's the time on your camera? I don't know, Rob. I'm you know, jibber jabbering you away. Take a peek. Yeah, I can't see. Um, it's 20. I can't see, Rob. 20, there's 20 29. something. Is it 29? Should we go? Yeah. Let's go. We should We should probably go for this week, Chris. Rob, it's I love great, you. Great, Chris. I love you. All right, dude. Love you. All hail Martin. Talk to you next week. All hail Martin. Chihuahua. See you later, dude. Bye. Bye. I'm going to keep recording, Rob. Do you know why? Because we didn't mention William Shatner. Did you ever notice William Shatner, whenever he fought, he used, he clasped his hands together, his two hands together? Yes. And he, he karate chopped he with a two handed. Why? Yeah. Why was that? <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, fuck. I think you give me some sort of Canadian history about this. No, that's no, it's just hilarious. Real <laughs> wow. They've act, they've actually they actually carried it over into that that Star Trek: The New Generation no. with Patrick Stewart. He actually? does the same thing. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe it's because you know, I would do the same thing whenever I'm whenever I'm defending myself from uh, from my wife. <laughs> you do a double handed karate. <laughs> no, no. I just I just hold my hands up in a defensive pose because it was good enough for when you know she's coming at me. You know, when I can hold it up, I shouldn't even joke. God forgive no, me. No, yeah, we'll Ninth anniversary this year. This year, I can't be at that sort of Oh, that's thing. awesome, dude. Nine years, wow. Well, 15, to, 15 together. Nine, nine I've kept. That's great, dude. Oh, Rob, I'm going to say this. Drugs do work. <laughs> <laughs> You've been drugging her? <laughs> yeah, well, not drugging her, not. <laughs> Jesus. 
This is all edited out. Well, we've got to, dude. Your camera's turned off anyways. No, it isn't. Better not be.